All right, y'all. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're tuning in. I'm grateful to have you here. And we got one of my favorite bearded biblical brothers ever back in the building today. And as far as wisdom is concerned, there's not many people that dish it out better than Phil Robertson. So I already know this is going to be a doozy, probably going to upset some lefties out there. But either way, he's talking about self-defense and how that comes directly from God Almighty. So I'll give my thoughts afterwards. Let's get it popping. 1 Corinthians 13. Listen to this carefully. Has God given you a right of self-defense? The government has. What about God? He says, love him and love your neighbor. You say, what if uh, one of my neighbors has come up in my yard with a weapon at three o'clock in the morning? He's got his buddies with him and they aim to loot my home and burn it down, what can I do? Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It's, it's the opposite of what you see in our streets. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. Look at the ones in the streets and find the ones that love God and each other. It's not easily angered. A lot of hate going on out there, you say. Love is not easily angered. Hard to get a guy who loves God and loves his neighbor and includes his families and his children and his wife. Hard to get him riled up. He knows how to love. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. And here's the kicker. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7. Love always protects from family units that they say we need to get rid of them where love is embedded within the family structure. Law enforcement personnel come out of family groups. That's the way the world operates. Husband, wife, children, cousins, uncles, aunts, grandpas, grandmas. It's the way it is. They say we need to get rid of the nuclear family where uh, the patriarchal family, like the one I have. I'm the grandpa of grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Miss Kay is grandma, great-grandma, great-great-grandma was coming up. You're like, it's a structure from top to bottom. I have to protect every one of them and my neighbors if I love them. Law enforcement is there to serve and protect. God implemented law enforcement they're doing what they're doing. They should be motivated by love for their neighbors. So they're going to police the neighborhoods and let them know we love you. We're here to punish wrongdoers who are, are envious and they're boastful and they're proud and they're rude and they're self-seeking and they're... And, 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 Therefore, the dictionary says, protect. What is it? Love always protects. Well, what is, what does it mean? Love. Uh, 
means to defend. Love protects, defends, to keep from harm coming that, their way. You're like, hmm. So if you love them, you must prove it by defending them, sheltering them from evil, uh, fixing it so they won't be harmed. Defend. Love always protects, which is it always defends. In the family unit, and your neighbors are right next to you over there, and you say, well, do you love your neighbors? you get along with them? So, well, yeah, great. Good, godly people. And even if they're not godly, and they're right down there, you say, yeah, they're my neighbors. Yeah, well, well, if you see a bunch of thugs coming up in there in their yard, wanting to do them harm, you have a God-given right to go down there and say, I'm here to protect you. How many are there? How much, how much ammo do y'all have? We would have much rather they study the Bible and they love us like we love them. But what if they're hell bent on evil and they're coming after your family, your property? So as a last resort, we tried to get along with y'all. We tried to get along with you. We would have a lot rather sat down and had a meal with you and maybe find out what your problem is and why you're mad at me and you want to steal my stuff and hurt my family. But you wouldn't allow us to love you. You came to kill and destroy. You belong to the evil one and we're here to protect our family and our property to the death. How can anyone not love this man right here and everything that he represents? I personally could never get tired of listening to him break things down and how he does it in such a righteous manner. And he always has this very unique skill of making things make sense to common folks like myself. And I don't know if y'all watch his Unashamed podcast that he does with two of his sons, Al and Jace Robertson, but I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it yet. All Bible-based and righteous men of God, which we need a whole lot more of if you can't tell the world you see around you. We need some real leaders. We need husbands and, and men that just tell it like it is with no hot take intentions, no BS. They just dish out the truth. As sad as it is, many people in this world, they don't know what real love is because they don't know Jesus Christ. They don't know the sinless one that voluntarily took on all the evil, all the guilt, the shame, bore it on the cross, took on all the darkness and then beat death and gave us a way out, gave us eternal salvation when we've reached repentance and put our faith in him. That's the grace of God. But we see our streets today. These people don't know real love. So they want to take what you got. Some people, they want to harm your family just because, because they're jealous of what you got, because they feel that they were, they were entitled that they didn't earn it, whatever it may be. They may feel like you're in a position that you've been blessed and that they're without because they don't know Jesus Christ. And that's the problem. So that's not your fault. That's not your fault. You can love them. You can do your best to inform them and, and guide them into repentance and, and spread the good news. But at some point, evil may come knocking, unfortunately. And it's not just a right to protect and to defend those that we love and our, our things that are all around us that we've been blessed with. It's an obligation. Luke 11 verse 21 says, when a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. Even Jesus in Luke 22 verse 36 told his disciples that if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. Jesus knew that those people were going to have to defend themselves and that they were going to be threatened and persecuted for following him. And he upheld their right to self-defense. Now, I know he went on to rebuke Peter when he cut off that ear, but in today's day and age, God, Jesus Christ, everything biblical, it backs us up. And, and our form of a sword is a gun. That's our Second Amendment right, God-given. And the Bible, it never forbids self-defense. Exodus 22, verses 2 and 3, God talks about if a thief is caught breaking in at night and is struck a fatal blow, the defender is not guilty of bloodshed. But if it happens after sunrise, the defender is guilty of bloodshed. So what that basically is saying is that if somebody comes in at night with evil intentions, which if they're breaking into your house one that's bad that's not good they can't have uh anything 
positive to offer to your life and your situation. If they break into your house at night in the dark, they're there to, to either murder, to steal. Nothing promising is coming out of that. So if you defend yourself, your possessions, your loved ones in that situation, I can promise you that come judgment day, God's going to side in your favor because that person was clearly lured by Satan to kill, steal, and destroy. And they're filled with all sorts of evil wickedness and lawlessness that they haven't repented of and, and been held accountable for. So when we're talking about self-defense, a lot of people on the left, the extreme radicals out there, they're like, oh, you don't need a gun. You don't need your second amendment. You don't need to be able to defend your family and your loved ones. You can call a social worker. You can call up this, this, that, and the third. They want to demonize cops. They want to demonize guns. All these tools and things that have been put in place to defend our loved ones, our values, the, the things that we have always cherished and honored, they want to take that away. But our Second Amendment rights are directly in line with God's word. And our founding fathers were fearless men of God that knew that when they created those foundational documents way back in 1776. So a big part of society today, they're godless and, and of the devil, which is why they keep trying to revoke our liberties and, and all our freedoms to defend ourselves. They don't want us to be able to defend ourselves. They want to be armed with security guards and, and look out for their people, but they don't want everyday common citizens like myself and you to have our second amendment rights and be able to defend against evil. It's extremely jacked up. And then they have the nerve to try to play Christian for a moment and flip the scripts and say, well, if you love your neighbor as yourself, if you love people, why would you want to kill them? Why would you want to, to use a gun? Why would you want to harm anybody? Why not just, you know, let them come in, take what you got and, 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 you know, test your chances. But it also says in the Bible, thou shall not commit murder. There's two words in Hebrew. One is for kill. The other one is for murder. The one that's actually used in the commandments is murder. So we have the right based on God's word breathed out by him to kill. That's our right in, in defense of ourselves, family, neighbors, our entire nation. And no one should be able to murder any sort of innocent life. But that's the, that's the kicker. That's the caveat because they want to be able to murder innocent life. They are advocates of murdering innocent children in a mother's womb. So I have to acknowledge that and we have to discuss it if we're fighting the good fight and standing up for life. You have to stand for life across the board, not just when it you know justifies your narrative and, and goes along with the propaganda that you're trying to push. You can't play Christian and try to stand up for life, but you don't really stand up for life because you're all for pro-murder of babies and you call that birth control and all this craziness. I stand for innocent life. So if it's my family, if it's the things that I've earned that God has blessed my family with, if it's my neighbor, if it's somebody out there in the streets that's about to be harmed by an evil, wicked criminal consumed by Satan, I have the right to kill them if it comes down to it. I don't want to have to do that, but in that moment, they're probably not going to receive the gospel. They're probably not going to receive the love that I have to offer. I love them, but I don't love what they're doing. I don't love the actions that they're choosing to engage in. But I can sit here and rant all day long and try to make clever points and all of that, but nothing is more true. Nothing is going to drive the point home more than God's word breathed out by him into that Bible. So 1 John 3, verse 4 through 10. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. So if somebody wants to take from you, to harm you, to commit bloodshed, they don't love you as a brother, as a sister, any of that. God is not in them. They are of the devil. They had all the chances in the world to choose the righteous path. They had all the chances in the world to lean on the Lord and not their own understanding. The Lord's yoke is easy. His burden is light. But if you choose to do it your way, if you choose to be a slave to sin and, and have that bondage and continue to wage that, it ultimately leads to death, whether that's the death, whether that is it comes down to the hands of somebody defending themselves that, that kills that person or whatever it may be. It's always going to catch up. Satan can only lead you to one place, and that's to darkness, eternal damnation, hell, punishment forever. So if you don't reach repentance, confess Christ as Lord 
it's, it's, it's going to end bad for you. I'm not saying anybody who doesn't do that is, is, is a thief and uh, out there, you know, trying to harm people, but you're also not going to be in heaven. You're also not going to have eternal salvation. So what, what really is the difference in the long run? Because if you're putting all your eggs in the basket of men, in the basket of material possessions, stealing, leaning into all this sin, then you're doing it all wrong. You're not going to have eternal fulfillment, peace, bliss, none of that stuff. You might think you're you're coming away with something by stealing from somebody, by harming somebody, but in the long run, you can have all of that forever. All of this is temporary on earth. So why risk doing any of these sinful actions and practicing that and living in lawlessness, letting Satan consume you and, and being of the devil when you can have all of that forever it, by just following Christ, by just repenting of your wicked ways that we're all fallen. None of us are perfect. Saying you're a Christian just means that you know you're a flawed sinner in need of a savior. So why not come over here and do things that way instead of leaning on your own accord and risking your life forever? It just don't make no sense to me, but that's when I just dish out some more scripture. First John 5, verse 10 through 12. Whoever believes in the, in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his son. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life. And this life is in his son. That's Jesus. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. These people that we see in the world that are Christians, that are saved and born again, that are still lost and, and stranded in their own ways. I love them. I pray for them. But they don't have life right now. They might think that they're alive, living in temptation and perversing God's word and doing all of this craziness. I know that might not have made, made sense in a uh, literal English sense, but y'all know what I'm trying to say. People that, that side with these criminals, that side with all this lawless activity that we see on the extreme radical and secular left, they don't have life. They're, they're misconstrued and they're fooled by these smoke and mirrors. They think that all this wealth and things are going to grant them some sort of eternal fulfillment, but it doesn't. They got a rude awakening coming for them if they don't come over here to, to, the, to the bright side, come over here to the real light, because in the end, that amounts to darkness. So don't put any of your trust and faith and confidence in men and things of this world. It's all passing away. You can't take any of it with you. You can't strap a U-Haul to a hearse. So come over here and take a piece of, of, of life. Come come bite off a piece of what this, this salvation looks like. And I know that might be a kind of weird analogy, but basically I'm just saying, put your faith in Christ. Don't put your faith in all of these wonky, worldly, passing away, catty, wampus things. It doesn't get, get you anything in the long run. And the goal should be to strive for forever peace, not just temporary lackluster uh, facade peace. That's what I'm trying to say. But I know this was a deep one. I know I got off into a tangent and, and fired up like I usually do. If you like that, uh, let me know what you think down below in the comments section. If you'd rather me talk a little less, Probably not going to happen because, you know, I just let the Holy Spirit do his thing and, and, and I go from there. So let me know what you guys think about Phil's comments, about the world that we're living in, about self-defense as a whole and the Second Amendment, how it all ties in and is in line with God's word. I would love to hear your thoughts. Drop them down below. Let's keep this conversation rolling. Don't forget to like this video by smashing the thumbs up button down below. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring the notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a video. Just in case YouTube forgets to let you know, I appreciate you. I love y'all for doing so. If you want to take it a step further, you like what we're doing over here, you want to show a little extra love and support, by no means do you have to, but you can get awesome designs like this confidence, knowing I can't, but he can. These designs are made over my wife's Etsy store by her, customized in-house, all of that, insulated tumblers, petite, teat, small sizes to big, big and hefty for the 5X folks out there, all different sizes and colors. Like I said, we don't discriminate. We appreciate y'all. It goes a very long way and allowing me to continue to do what I do. All my other links are down below in the description section. Shout out to the Patreon, buy me a coffee fam. Anybody who's ever joined the Gibson family on YouTube by hitting that little join button and becoming a member, I'm so grateful for y'all. I can't thank you enough and put into words and context just how appreciative I am for you guys showing up every single video and allowing my freckle face to rain at you. I just love y'all so much and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up. I'll be praying for you. Until next time, Godspeed, I'm gone.